Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. So I know that recently there's been a lot of chaos has been going on in the stock market recently and uh, I think that with all this chaos that's going on, many people have forgotten that SPACs are still a thing that kind of, you know, exists. Uh, so uh, I think that this will be a pretty good opportunity to bring your attention back to the SPAC market because some of the prices have dropped pretty dramatically recently and I think that uh, some of the SPACs that I will talk about in this video, they're getting to some very interesting price points. Uh, so if you're new here and you don't know what SPACs are, by the way, I made a video explaining everything. So please go watch that video before you go watch this video. Uh, for this video, I'm just going to assume that you know the basics of how kind of the whole SPAC thing works uh, and you have a basic understanding of like warrants and units and all that stuff because I am going to go through a lot of those terms. So make sure you understand those. And if you don't, please watch that video before uh, you watch any more of this video. Anyway, so it's during these downtimes that you want to be buying SPACs, right? Because uh, you don't want to be buying SPACs when the prices are really high, especially a lot of these SPACs, they haven't even announced any targets yet. Uh, so you're literally just buying like a blank check, right? You're buying into uh, the management team and you're trusting them to pick something good. So uh, with a lot of these like pre-merger announcement SPACs, you really don't want to overpay. Uh, for example, you guys know I'm a big fan of Pershing Square Capital or not Pershing Square Capital, sorry, Pershing Square Tom uh, which is Bill Ackman's SPAC uh, and at its highest point people were paying over $34 for this. Uh, now I know that the base value for PSTH started at around $21 instead of the usual $10 uh, but still if you were paying $34 or whatever it was if you were paying over $34 you were paying essentially like over a 50% premium just to get in uh, which to me doesn't seem like the best deal even though I understand that this is Bill Ackman uh, so he's one of the most famous like people on Wall Street, but still, you know, paying a 50% premium when you don't even know what you're going to get, it's not the best deal in my opinion. Uh, however, now at around $25 per share, well, that sounds a lot more reasonable, right? Uh, and although uh, I would still say that even now the premium is still a little bit high. So for me, uh, personally, I'm more interested in Pershing Square if it dips below, let's say like 24 or uh, in the 23 range would be ideal, which is why uh, PSTH is actually not one of the three that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, but I think that there might be other ones that are even better. Uh, so which SPACs am I talking about? Uh, well, number one on this list is LDH Growth. A ticker symbol LDHAU. Uh, so this one is actually very new because uh, I just started trading last Friday. So I assume that not many people know about it yet. Uh, and this is SoftBank SPAC. And as of Friday is trading just about at its net asset value or NAV, which is $10.17. So it's just above that $10 NAV, right? So uh, SoftBank, if you don't know what it is, by the way, it's this giant Japanese conglomerate who has a hand in a lot of different companies that we all know and love. Uh, or possibly love, I don't know about your preferences as to different companies, but uh, they were an early investor in Uber, Alibaba, DoorDash, WeWork, although I think that one didn't work out that well, but it doesn't change the fact that Masayoshi Sun, who is the founder of SoftBank, uh, he's still one of the richest people on earth, uh, and SoftBank is incredibly influential on Wall Street. So uh, this particular SPAC is run by a gentleman named uh, Marcelo Claure, who is the COO of SoftBank, and he was the former CEO of Sprint, uh, and he is widely credited with leading a turnaround at Sprint while he was there. Uh, so uh, yeah, and obviously this SPAC is being led by someone with a ton of experience in the industry and in the business world, uh, and it's being backed by SoftBank, which I think that uh, it's got a lot of potential behind it. So uh, if you're looking at the value of the SPAC, the trust value is $200 million, which seems kind of small, especially if you compare it to Pershing Square Taunting, uh, which is $4 billion. However, I think that a $200 million trust size is just about average in the SPAC world. And I always got to point this part out to people because I know this part can be kind of confusing. So remember when a SPAC merger happens, the SPAC does not acquire 100% of the company that they're gonna merge with, right? So what they do is they take a minority stake, uh, which means that minority means less than 50%. Uh, usually it's much smaller than 50% as well. So what that means is that with a $200 million trust size, you can easily acquire companies that are much more than $200 million in market cap, right? So with $200 million,
million dollars, if you're acquiring, let's say, a 20% stake, uh, well, then you can merge with a $1 billion company. In fact, if your target company is too small, it could also be a problem because I think that one potential issue with Pershing Square, Tontine, and why they haven't really found a target yet is because their trust size is $4 billion, right? So with Pershing Square, the pool of available candidates is actually very small. Uh, so sometimes it might actually be advantageous to have a smaller trust size because that means that you have more options and more target companies to choose from. You have a wider pool of candidates. Uh, so in terms of what this means uh, and what type of companies that LDH is looking for, uh, well, the target categories are tech, internet of things, artificial intelligence, and Latin America. So it actually might be a non-US based company, which could be very interesting. Now, unfortunately, I do not know too much about the Latin American market. So if it does turn out to be a Latin American company, I'm not too familiar familiar so I I'm not sure if like what kind of candidates there would be right but uh, if you guys have any idea or if you guys are like familiar with that market and what kind of tech companies are coming out of Latin America please leave it down in the comments and let me know because uh, uh, I'm completely clueless about that. But uh, lastly, this SPAC is sold as a unit at the moment because it is just it has just started trading last Friday. Uh, so with one share and the fraction of a warrant is one out of five. So one fifth of a warrant per unit, which is kind of disappointing because most SPAC units come with a fourth or a third. So, uh, you know, in case you don't know how that works, just as a reminder, like when you buy a unit it comes with one share and a fraction of a warrant and you want that fraction to be as large as possible, right? Because uh, then you can like buy less units and get a full warrant because fractional warrants would be kind of, it would be useless, right? So uh, yeah, it only comes with a fifth of a warrant. So that means that you actually have to buy five units to have a full warrant. And then if you buy five units, you have five shares on one warrant. So that's how it works. Uh, but I guess that uh, because this one does have a famous backer, i.e. SoftBank, uh, the terms are a little less generous towards uh, retail investors because uh, they kind of already have that marketing going for them. So they don't need to like attract as many people as some other like no name SPACs, right? So uh, yeah, that's just what it is. Uh, and by the way, if you're wondering what tool I'm using to get all this info on SPACs, I'm using SPACtrack.net, uh, which, um, yeah, which is a tool that I use, not sponsored by them in any way. Uh, I just use them because I genuinely think that it's a good resource. So I'll leave a link down below if you want to uh, take a look. It has a list of all the SPACs that are ongoing right now. Uh, so anyways, uh, that's LDH growth. Now let's move on. So next one is Switchback Energy 2, ticker symbol SWBK. So if you guys recall Switchback Energy 1, which was SBE, which has now completed its merger into ChargePoint, uh, that merger has already completed. And if you look at ChargePoint, I know it's been extremely volatile, but uh, at one point it did hit almost $50 per share and it's still sitting at over $20 per share. And we know that since it was a SPAC, it started at $10 per share. So uh, yeah, if you got into Switchback Energy 1 really early, uh, well, then you would probably be still up quite a bit despite the recent pullback. Uh, so ChargePoint, by the way, if you don't know what it is, is a company that builds uh, electric car charging uh, infrastructure. So they build the electric vehicle charging stations. Uh, so yeah, this is what people who make SPACs do, right? So they make a SPAC and then they do a merger and they try to find the best company possible, obviously, right? Uh, and if they find a really successful one and then they do a good deal and they merge uh, and people like them, well, then they just go and they make a second version of the SPAC and then try to do the same thing again. Uh, so then they just do this over and over again. And then uh, what it does is that it builds a lot of credibility and trust in the team. Uh, and it's going to become easier for the management team of the SPAC to uh, make a new deal next time, right? So uh, yeah, if you're an investor in ChargePoint and if you like ChargePoint, the deal itself, you might want to take a closer look at Switchback Energy 2 because uh, it's trading at pretty much NAV right now, net asset value, uh, coming in at $10.15 per share. Uh, now the units have already split, so I'm just talking about the shares only this time. Uh, so you do have the option though to buy warrants individually if you want to go down the warrants route, but I'm just going to talk about the shares. Uh, so same thing with Switchback Energy 1. Uh, the focus here is on sustainability and renewable energy. 
Uh, so you can expect something that has to do with EVs, solar energy, batteries, maybe even hydrogen, I'm not sure, uh, something along those lines, okay? So uh, yeah, I think that this one could be interesting if you're in it for like the renewable energy play and um, yeah, it's pretty cheap right now. So uh, your downside is limited, right? The reason why uh, I'm so interested in talking about SPACs that are near NAV is because uh, when you buy in, uh, well then it can't go that much lower, right? If it dips below $10, uh, it won't dip below that much below ten dollars because then it becomes an arbitrage opportunity, right? Because if it dips below ten dollars, then you can buy in at a cheaper price, and then when the spec either merges or uh, or it fails and it dissolves, you can still redeem your shares for ten dollars. So it won't sink that much uh, below ten dollars. So your downside is extremely limited uh, when you buy into a spec near NAV. Uh, so, anyways, uh, last one on this list is Churchill Capital Five ticker symbol CCV, uh, and it's at just over $10 right now, uh, just like the other ones. Uh, so we all know about CCIV, which is Lucid, uh, so that was Churchill Capital 4. Uh, but did you know that there were more? But wait, there's more. Yeah, so it's another spec that's made by the exact same guy who made all the Churchill Capital specs, and his name is Michael Klein, and apparently he's really famous on Wall Street. So on Wall Street, he's known as the Rainmaker, which in Wall Street terms just basically means a person who generates income for a business or organization by brokering deals or attracting clients and funds. So basically he's really good at making deals and uh, that's a really nice quality to have with SPACs obviously because this whole game is about making the right deal with the right company and this uh, whole deal with CCIV and Lucid has only increased his fame. Uh, so although with these Churchill SPACs though, I do have to mention a word of warning that uh, there's not really a specific area of focus when it comes to the target of the SPACs uh, as far as I know. So you could literally get anything, right? And you could get something that's not very good. Uh, so with Churchill Capital 3, it ended up merging with a company called Multiplan, which uh, is a healthcare industry company. I'm not exactly sure like what they do actually, but uh, I'm afraid that I don't know too much about it. However, However, what I can tell you is that investors absolutely hated this deal, right? Investors did not like this deal at all. Uh, and the stock has fallen quite a bit below $10 after the merger completed. So uh, that one was pretty much a huge flop. Uh, and I feel like all the healthcare SPACs have actually been quite um, like bad recently because there was also another one called Clover Health, uh, which was IPOC, which was uh, Chamath's uh, SPAC. And that one was really hated as well. So uh, that one was also a huge flop in my opinion. So hopefully Churchill Capital 5 will be something better and something good and probably something not in the healthcare industry. No offense to you if you work for the healthcare industry. Like, thank you for being an essential worker in this time of crisis. But uh, yeah, I mean, with all these like SPAC mergers for healthcare companies, uh, it's all been like really bad recently. So uh, yeah, hopefully Churchill Capital 5 will be something better. But yeah, anyways, who knows? Uh, so those are my three top picks for SPACs that are trading near NAV. And uh, yeah, I'll leave the video here for today. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you like the series. Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, links down below in the description as always. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.